Welcome to the show. It is Monday morning, and we are headed for an awesome week. I hope that you are as excited as I am, because we got Champions League this week. We got Stars, Blues, Series, and all the NHL playoffs, which have been a blast continuing on. And uh, I'm very excited. Premier League season is winding down. Liverpool and City going right at it, and I will discuss that later in the week, probably as we as we head towards the weekend. Um, but Champions League, I'll be breaking those down, obviously, tomorrow morning and Wednesday morning, the day of the games. Uh, but today, I just wanted to talk about the draft, because the draft is over the weekend, and you can go over and read um, my blog. I wrote some thoughts on it, just kind of a recap. Uh, link is in the description. And... Uh, I could talk about the Spurs not fouling, but everybody's talking about that. And uh, I could um, I could talk about hockey, but we, we got plenty of time for that. So let's just dig into the draft for about 10 minutes here, and then and then uh, we'll be done with it until next year, I guess. Uh, although I will be, you know, doing some fantasy rankings and things like that later on. So it was just a fun draft. It always is. Uh I love just watching players get excited, their families get excited, and uh, the the turnout in Nashville was unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but it, it's just crazy how much more people love football than uh, even something like the NBA, and obviously the NHL and baseball, but it, it, the turnout at the NFL draft is larger than anything that basketball could possibly come up with. It's truly shocking. Um, so, you know, props to the NFL because they, they just keep doing it right. As far as the draft went, I thought I, there, were, there weren't a lot of surprises to me. I thought the biggest surprise to me was, uh, other than obviously Daniel Jones getting picked six, uh, which I talk about, all that's going to happen to him his whole career is he better be better than Dwayne Haskins because they're playing in the same division. They play twice a year. They're big rivals, uh, New York and Washington. And if he's not better than Dwayne Haskins, Dave Gettleman's going to be fired. The Giants are going to be left in a lurch. Uh, When you have one of those top picks and you spend it on a guy who most people consider for sure the third best quarterback probably the fourth best quarterback in the draft and you spent number six on him when you also have 17 where you could have probably easily gotten him and he doesn't have great arm strength you are running the risk um of uh, i guess you do with every pick but this one especially this just puts your job in the balance of your dave gettleman especially after the other questionable decisions he's made and uh now with Haskins falling to the Redskins at, at 15, uh, it really gets interesting because Daniel Jones better be far better than Dwayne Haskins or it's not going to end well for either he or the GM who has put his trust in him. The other su- biggest surprise to me, first of all, was Gerald Willis of Miami, who a lot of people had as a late second, third, early third round guy going undrafted. So there must be something going on there. I haven't looked into it today. I was driving back uh, from my grandma's house. So I haven't looked into it, but that, I, that was a shocking fall. I re- felt really bad for the kid. It's tough when you when you think you're going to be picked and you just keep falling, keep falling, keep falling, and you never get that call. Um, but uh, other than that, it was Greedy Williams falling all the way down to 48. Now, I understand people had issues with his tackling, but look, I have watched all of those guys play a lot, especially... Baker, Murphy, and Greedy. I saw you sin less, but I still watched about four Temple games last year. Um, Greedy's the best cover guy of all of those. That is virtually, I don't want to say undeniable because there's always a question, but he, to me, it really wasn't that close that he was the best cover man. And you say, yeah, he's he's not you know, excited about tackling, but if I can get a guy who can blanket a receiver um, short side or uh, wide side of the field for 60 minutes of a football game it's okay if he misses a few tackles if your corner's making a lot of tackles anyway you're you're probably not doing so well so i understand the tackling thing but to me a guy who can blanket cover uh in this day and age is is far more valuable than 
is far more valuable, even if he, he doesn't make tackles, than, you know, a corner who's a mediocre cover guy and, and, and is a great tackler. I'll take the cover guy all day long, especially in this day and age, um, when obviously uh, passing is at an all-time high. Uh, other than that, I thought the first round went pretty much as planned. There, were, I, there weren't any huge surprises. I thought Cleland Farrell went way earlier than I thought, but I didn't think it was a bad pick. I thought he was slightly underrated, probably a little early. I, again, I said Oakland should have looked to trade back, but sometimes the, there just aren't any, ta- aren't any takers, and you want your guy. You know, they spent all this time scouting. They think he's their guy, and who am I to say that he isn't? We'll see. He was obviously a great player. He's a top 15 talent, um, so taking him at four isn't unheard of. It's not stupid, but yeah, I don't know if they could have traded back, but it probably would have been the time to do so, but they got their guy, uh, and I'm sure he'll be good. He was quality in college. I thought uh, Rashawn Gary was a bad pick, no matter who took him. He has all the talent. I don't doubt that. He's, he's a good kid, too. I, I haven't heard anything bad about him. The issue is he just was not productive at Michigan. And to take him at 12, if you're the Packers, I thought was way, way off the mark. I know I was projecting him in the top 15 as well just because of uh, you know, how he performed at the Combine and people's uh, pretty much the measurables on him. But uh, it, it was always going to be a bad pick is what I'm saying, no matter who took him. It's not just the Packers. Anybody that took him I, I thought was going to be a bad pick if it was in the top 15. Um, he just wasn't productive. You can... You can talk about his measurables all day long. You can talk about, you know, his height, his speed, his his athleticism. It's all off the charts. But at some point, you have to have some production, and he did not have any at Michigan. Uh, so I do worry about that. And then I thought I thought the Redskins had the best draft just because of their first two picks. They got they needed a quarterback, especially one uh, to kind of kind of bring along uh, he can start behind case keenum if he wants that's not you know ridiculous to think about but regardless they got Dwayne haskins at 14 or uh, 15 they didn't even have to trade up they t- talked about trading up into the top 10 to get the guy he ends up falling to them at 15 what a huge huge plus for them on top of that they were able to trade back into the first round to get montez sweat now montez sweat is uh, many people thought uh, a top 10 talent easily. And uh, great defensive end, great pass rusher, can also play the run pretty well. A little bit undersized, so he's worse against the run. Great pass rusher, though. And he just had a little bit of a heart issue. And if that heart is good to go, this is what happened to, to Mo Hurst last year uh, when he went to the Raiders. But if his heart is, is fine and he's good to go, which there haven't been any reports saying he isn't good to go, so if, he, if he's fine, then that is an absolute steal by the Redskins. To get two top 10 guys with 15 and 26, uh, you can't beat that. And on top of that, they didn't give up a ton to trade back into the first round. Obviously, they gave up a little bit, but it wasn't an absurd amount. So it's not even like the greatest risk that, that you could run trading back into the top top uh or, or the first round for montez sweat so I, I just thought the the redskins were absolutely phenomenal in this draft truly truly great dk metcalf's fall was another thing to behold uh it's it's clear that people want polished receivers polished route runners not athletes at receiver i think they've seen too much of that uh you know terrell Pryor was was kind of an athlete playing receiver and he had that one good year and, and, and didn't didn't do much after that after he got that big contract. So I think teams are looking now for more polished wideouts. Uh, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, was the first receiver to go in the first round. And he's more of a speed guy. I understood that for Baltimore. I said in my breakdown for them on the, on the site that I would think they would go for someone more like A.J. Brown, more of a polished guy who can move the chains. But I understand if they go for that deep threat. Uh, because you want to keep those safeties honest and you want to keep them back so you're able to run the ball with Ingram and Lamar Jackson. So it it wasn't a bad pick, but again, 
DK Metcalf falling below Brown, below Hardeman, below all these receivers. Uh, was he below Hardeman? I, I can't remember. Hardeman might have been third round. Um, but below all these guys just shows you that athleticism ain't going to cut it anymore. It might have uh, a few years ago, but now you need polished route runners to really be at, at peak efficiency in, in today's passing game, which uh, to me makes all the sense in the world. You can get athletes anywhere. You know, it's not like these other receivers aren't athletes. So, uh, you know, I think DK Metcalf's fall is a, is a good uh, lesson to learn for young receivers, which is polish your route running, get the technical stuff down, and, uh, and p- if you pair that with your athleticism, you're going to be tough to stop. The Patriots, I thought, did well. I think Chase Winovich is perfect for them. Great pass rusher. Can come in in pass rushing situa- situations. Uh, just a good guy to have in the locker room, too. Uh, fun, jovial, and uh, and definitely definitely a hard worker. Wants to win. So I, he's kind of a perfect personality in that locker room because, you know, it can get seems like it can get a little stale, and, and he seems like he could bring some life. But great player as well. I thought he was a good pick along with uh, Nikhil Harry. Again, I've said before, I don't think Nikhil Harry is that great, but as I've said a billion times, it all comes down to what situation you're put in. A lot of guys are really great talents, but get put in a terrible situation, lose confidence, uh, get injured, yada, yada, and, and can't recover from that and end up having bad careers. Guys who, if they had been on the Patriots, if they had been on the Rams, you know, if they had been put in the right offense or the right situation, might have been absolute stars. So, Nikhil Harry, I think it was the perfect spot for him. He's plenty athletic. He can catch the ball. Um, my issue was he, he catches it a little bit too close to his body. You don't see a lot of catches up here. Um, you know, out wide, and I think that's going to be an issue. But, again, you start working with Tom Brady, you start working with those Patriots coaches, and and the sky's the limit for this guy. Uh, That's all I've got. I'm going to call it a 12 minutes. And, uh, yeah, make sure to check out uh, the recap. It is up on the site or will be by noon, but I have it done, so I'll probably just do it right after this. Um, So check that out. Link is in the description. And... I look forward to chatting again tomorrow. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you know right when it's up at 6 a.m. when you're groggy and you forget what you want to watch while you're making breakfast and then you get that notification and you're like, thank God I have Matt to watch while I'm making breakfast. You're welcome. Uh, Subscribe for more of these every morning and again, hit the notification bell. And uh, I will see y'all tomorrow to discuss Ajax Tottenham and uh, probably some hockey as well. We'll see. Have a good one. See you all tomorrow.